To understand chlorination and chloramination control, let's start with a simple line that shows measured chlorine levels and the amount of chlorine that is added to the water. When you are dosing and measuring chlorine, you overcome your chlorine demand. As a result, you see chlorine residual building in the graph. To explain this concept, we'll use a closed system, a bucket of water without the presence of ammonia. As we add chlorine to the water, it's used up at first as it reacts with the existing matter in the water. For example, bacteria, organics, etc. So we do not measure much, if any, chlorine. Eventually, the added chlorine has exceeded the demand and we measure more chlorine that now forms a residual, as is indicated by the graph in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. When you chloraminate, you add either chlorine to water with existing ammonia, or dose both chlorine and ammonia together, or you can add ammonia to water that has already been chlorinated in the treatment plant or another utility and has some chlorine residual. In this example, let's pretend we are adding chlorine to water that already has ammonia. When ammonia is used by chloraminating systems, our graph changes pushing up the amount of matter the chlorine has to bond with initially. This creates what is known as the chloramination and or breakpoint chlorination curve. You are trying to create monochloramine. In substitution reaction, the ammonia drops a hydrogen atom and the chlorine atom takes its place. When you have effectively bonded one chlorine from hypochlorous acid molecule or hypochlorite ion with each ammonia molecule, you have created the target disinfectant monochloramine and achieve the ideal state of chloramination. If you continue to dose chlorine past this state, you begin to experience formation di and finally trichloramine. These states are not ideal. It causes your total chlorine residual to drop radically, although you are adding more chlorine. You will experience taste and odor issues when you are in this zone, and your disinfecting power is significantly diminished. When you have fully bonded and then have removed all ammonia nitrogen past this point, you return to the original chlorination curve, where for every part of chlorine you dose, you will see one part of chlorine residual formed. This means you have achieved breakpoint, and now you apply free chlorine disinfection versus chloramination of your water. Let's pause for a moment to make an important differentiation. What's the difference between free and total chlorine? Free chlorine refers to both hypochlorous acid and the hypochlorite ion or bleach, and as the form of chemical commonly added to water systems for disinfection. When ammonia is also present, monochloramine, dichloramine, and trichloramine will form, as we saw. Chloramines are also known as combined chlorine. Total chlorine is the sum of free chlorine and combined chlorine. The level of total chlorine will always be higher than or equal to the level of free chlorine. It is important to understand that all mentioned chlorine species are present in the water in equilibriums. Therefore, at any given time, there is a portion of every species. These equilibriums depend on concentrations of the species, water temperature, and pH. Such situation dictates the approach to measuring the right species for correct and efficient chloramination control. How do you know where your utility's water lies on this chart? Some simple measurements can tell you. For instance, in Zone 1, you'll see total chlorine, total ammonia, monochloramine, and free ammonia. To distinguish Zone 1 from Zone 2, it is necessary to measure total chlorine and free ammonia at a minimum. In Zone 2, you will see total chlorine, monochloramine, total ammonia, but no free ammonia. In Zone 3, you will see no ammonia, and only chlorine, and your free and total chlorine value should be very similar or an exact match. It's important to understand that you can always capture equilibrial free chlorine in any of these zones, but only in zone 3 is its concentration sustainable. If you know the key parameters to look for in each section, it's easy to determine where you are on the chloramination curve. Does this change if your utility adds ammonia to water that has already been chlorinated, as many utilities do? The concepts all stay the same. You just move backwards along the line. Ammonia is added to the chlorinated water just prior to entrance into the distribution system. The dose is increased until a small trace of free ammonia is detected, ensuring you're in zone one. 
and maximum monochloramine residual has been reached. To determine where on the chloramination or breakpoint chlorination curve your utility is, or for more information, please visit hawk.com slash chloramination.